I'm Officer Jason Tilburg. I'm the training manager for the department. Uh, so we're doing a uh, department training. It's a post-mandated training for uh, use of force and de-escalation. And this is a training we do every two years. It's recently uh, implemented by post. Um, puts officers through uh, roughly 18 different scenarios where they may use force or may not use force. And uh, the scenarios require them to articulate why they would use force based on uh, federal law, state law, and department policy, as well as you know, when and why they might use some form of de-escalation technique, uh, why they use specific tools, uh, why they would use specific resources. What is it? Right, drop the knife! Die! You're gonna die! Drop the knife! Die. That's what you get! Die! Stay down! He's fine! Just leave him alone! Um, in regards to the policy, a lot of times they'll ask, you know, they want some clarification on our policy. The policy is relatively new um, and state law has changed slightly in the past couple of years. Um, there are some definitions in regards to proportionality, um, imminent immediacy that are somewhat fuzzy still for some officers um, and the scenarios I think help them kind of get a better grasp on, on what those, what those uh, definitions mean and how to apply them in a, in a real world situation. After each scenario, officers discuss what worked well and what to consider for the future. Depending on your choice or your involvement in it, you're always going to be gaining new data points and new perspectives. Okay? So at this stage in the game, I would prefer... During the debrief, officers review techniques, tactics, and strategies to make the best use of space, time, and distance. Absolutely. I think the scenario-based uh, trainings make things real. I mean, obviously it's it's scenarios, but there's certain things that, um, situations that we may have dealt with in the streets. I'm like, man, I kind of dealt with this. Maybe I should have handled it this way. That sometimes you show up and you think it's going to be one thing, and it's usually, or not usually, sometimes it's never that thing. Like, uh, we expected to show up, just have a creepy guy standing there, and we'd just be able to talk him down and detain him, but show up and the first thing you see is a guy walking with a gun, so. All right, we are live, gentlemen. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask for some more officers. They're in route. Okay. Stop hey. laughing at me! Hey, what's your name? I'm you're gonna kill you? myself, stop hey, laughing at me! Stop it! Hey, what's your name? Why? Hey, what's your name? Hey, what's your name? Hey, what's your name? Hey, They're laughing at me, I, I just, I can't name? take it anymore. Other officers, you've arrived on scene. Why? Well, I don't need to be here anymore. Hey, I'm gonna gut them like a fish, like a deer, like any other animal that I go hunting. What? They're laughing at me. What's your name? I'm not. Why does it matter? I just want. I want to know who I'm talking to. Douglas. Douglas. What's going on? They're see them right now. They're laughing at me. They are actively laughing at me. How am I? They're standing right there, giggling. I'm, I'm here trying to. I'm, I'm gonna kill myself, and they're laughing. Why? Why? Um, training in a classroom or training by a book isn't going to put give you those like real hands-on experiences. Um, Scenario-based training is really great because you the uh, scenarios kind of evolve, and as they evolve, you can um, adapt or change change your methods or your practice at that point um, for the situation. So I don't think there's any better training than scenario-based training.